In the previous video, we discussed about the protein folding mechanism. Now, in this video, we'll be discussing about a particular type of proteins called molecular chaperones. That are some specialized proteins that help in folding and do many other functions, which we are going to see in this video. These chaperones are a part of quality control system, particularly the protein control system, which is the mechanism by which a cell monitors proteins to ensure that proteins are in a stable and in a native state. The first important function of chaperone proteins is that they assist in protein folding and also rescue the misfolded protein back to its normal conformation. Second thing is that chaperones prevent the protein degradation. It's obvious that when the protein is correctly folded, it will not be sent to proteosome degradation, thus prevents the protein degradation. Then we have another class of chaperones that prevent the protein aggregation or their activity is in a way that they take out the proteins, they rescue the proteins from aggregated states. That is done by a class of chaperones called disaggregases. When all the explained functions of chaperones are well up to the mark, there will be no prion formation also. So it also aids in the prion formation prevention. And some chaperones assist in translocation of other proteins and there are also other chaperones like calnexin and calreticulin that have functions in MSC class molecules. Now let's see the action of chaperones in folding process. We see the protein has three ways to go. One is the on pathway folding which is the normal folding process. The second one is the off folding pathway. It's when the protein deviates from the folding process and gets aggregated. And the final way for protein is to go into the proteosome system which we are going to see later on what this proteosome system is. First of all, we have a linear amino acid sequence which needs folding to get it functional. And this process of protein folding proceeds via an intermediate state called the molten globule state. Under normal conditions, the molten globule state is transformed into final shape that is the native state of protein. But sometimes the intermediate state skips the pathway and goes off the folding pathway which leads to aggregation or misfolding. And it's here when the protein deviates from the path it remains non-functional and unfolded or we can say misfolded. Then the chaperone proteins acts on and catalyzes the off pathway protein back to the folding process and eventually we get the correctly folded protein. But sometimes chaperone catalysis fails. Then at that time the protein is marked by ubiquitin by ubiquitin proteasome system. And this system, this ubiquitin mediated pathway leads to protein degradation. And in this way, the misfolded protein, the damaged protein is eliminated. And there are some aggregated proteins that resist the proteosome system for degradation. And that proteins later on become the prions that leads to the several disease later on. Now let's see the types of chaperones. The majority of chaperones are from a family of HSP, that's heat shock proteins. These heat shock proteins are produced or translated during the stressful conditions in the cell. Why they are called heat shock proteins is that because first it was believed that these proteins are produced only when the cells were exposed to elevated temperatures. But now it has been shown that the HSPs are produced during toxic chemical exposure and radiation exposure also. The heat shock proteins are found in both eukaryotes as well as in prokaryotes. On the left we have eukaryotic HSPs and on the right we have E. coli heat shock proteins with the same functions but with different names. Then we have another class of chaperones called lactin chaperones which includes two chaperones. One is calnexin, other one is calreticulin. Both are mediated via calcium IP3 pathway. Both chaperones have function in immune system also like antigen presentation processing in MSC class 1 molecules. Then we have GRP58 protein that is glucose regulated protein chaperone that assists us in glycoprotein folding. Another protein folding chaperone is PDI that is protein disulfide isomerase. On the basis of chaperone activity, we categorize the chaperones into three classes. First one is the foldases, second one is the holdases, third one is the disaggregases. Foldases as the name implies are the chaperones that assist in folding. And also they transform the misfolded protein back to the native conformation. And these foldases require ATP. So they are ATP dependent. The example of foldases is HSP60 or GROW-EL in E. coli. Then another class is holdases. 
It prevents protein damage by providing favorable conditions. Unlike foldases, these holdases do not fold the protein or do not correct the misfolded protein, but they prevent the protein. And by the help of foldases, when the favorable conditions arrives again, the holdases supply back the protein to the foldases for folding process. Then finally, we have disaggregases. These are the chaperones that prevents aggregation, prevents prion formation, or rescues proteins from aggregated states. And one of the examples of disaggregated chaperones is HSP104 protein that is found in yeasts. So this is all about chaperones, the function of chaperones, the types of chaperones. In the next video, we'll be discussing about the mechanism of these foldases, particularly the HSP70 and HSP60 machinery. Thanks for watching the video. You can support the Hussein Biology on Patreon also. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.